Yeah, not a lot to say. We're really disappointed in the outcome of tonight's ball game. Really happy for Paul Maneri, obviously. Um, he, uh, he's a great coach. Um, he's got a great program and we came up a little short tonight. Disappointing. James Crappy of the Oregonian. Well, as I get what you're going for there in the eighth, but just walk me through your perspective of the balk. And I know you're trying to take away the squeeze play uh, and it's a lefty and you've got a runner on third who's crashing home on what they show as a bunt. I get it. But for fans who are watching this and they're asking why you're throwing a first as many times and it results in the go ahead run scoring off of your perspective on that play that was obviously very critical. Well, <laughs> I guess to put it simply, um, you know, we didn't execute one play in a series of plays that when you get in a situation where you're in a second and third spot, um, after we uh, had a leadoff walk, and then there was a chopper that goes over a first baseman's head that we've never really seen before at PK Park and that happened. Um, you know, your backs are against the wall and you need to, use your plays that you've practiced to where you can get out of a situation that is a low percentage time to get out of it. Um, and uh, for us to be able to get um, a strikeout in the situation first um, to lead to some, you know, positive energy and, uh, you know, to be able to have a first and third situation. Uh, we were right on the crash plays. Uh, had the hitter executed just a simple bunt, we would have recorded the out at home. Um, to sit back and not put those plays on would be giving somebody a tie or a win, and we're never going to give anybody anything. And so for us, we're always going to be on the aggressive. We're going to use the plays that we have that are designed to eliminate runs and win games. And tonight it didn't work out. Um, it's very disappointing. And we would never back down from using any play that we have or anything that we possibly could do to put a zero on the board and win a game uh, to pull back at that point in time and say, we're scared to do something or we're um, just going to hope it works out is not in our makeup. We'll never do that here at Oregon as long as I'm the head coach. Luis Ramirez, Statesman Journal. Coach, what were your thoughts when you uh, decided to bring Summers in the seventh? And were, were the plans, was the plan to always have such a short bullpen today? Um, I don't understand the short, what, what you're referring to with the short bullpen. Can you explain that? Oh, yeah, I'm just meaning, were you planning on having Summers come in so early? Well, we got we got the lead and his job is when he gets the lead to save games he's our closer and so that was the time to bring him in um the seventh inning we knew that uh getting to the top of their order in the eighth inning the game was going to be uh one in the eighth inning we knew that um and so we needed to prevent them from scoring in the eighth inning um, and we weren't able to do that to bring summers in at that time uh was the right decision um you know, and we knew that if we needed to at the very end of the game uh, and and Colby, we needed one more inning. Uh, we knew that we had Alstrom at the at the end to be able to do that. Rob Mosley, go to Obviously, emotions are raw, but you contend for the conference title. You get this program back to to the postseason. Can you can you take any joy in, in kind of the big picture right now or is it, is it just too fresh? Well, there's a lot of joy to take in the big picture. Um, I'm probably not going to look at the big picture right now. I'm very proud of the guys I got to work with every single day. My coaching staff, the players, uh, they committed to a ton this year. You know, this was the hardest year in anybody who's breathing on this planet's life. And they accepted all the challenges that were put in front of them. Uh, there was all kinds of stuff going on in this country uh, that they had to work through as young people. And it was hard enough for us old people to work through that stuff. Um, they did it as young people. They committed to things that were totally extraordinary. And next thing in, that they knew, they got a chance to be able to have a baseball season, which was in jeopardy for some time. And then for us to be able to finish uh, the way we did uh, after we were picked to, you know, basically not even exist this year in the Pac-12 play by the coaches and the finish in second, that's a big accomplishment. Yeah, we wanted to win the league and it didn't happen. Um, 
we wanted to win this region. We wanted to host a region. We were able to host a region. We wanted to win the regional and we came up run short. That was disappointing. Big picture stuff, celebrating that. Um, you know, I, I, yeah, in time, probably. Um, I don't know. W the way we feel about it is uh, we want to win a national championship at the University of Oregon. We feel like we can do that. These players committed to this program and got it to where it was this year and just blew people's minds, which was awesome. Uh, the coaching staff I had are just awesome coaches um, for recruits out there that it, it, if you want to be developed, this is the place to come. Uh, you want to win games, this is the place to come. And it's really bitter and fresh right now. Uh, I'm so proud of the team that I got a chance to coach this year. Really disappointed that it didn't continue to go past this regional. James Crapia. To go back to the sequence was, I understand you're taking it, they're taking away the bunt above all. If properly executed beyond taking away the bunt or just executing strikeouts and, and keeping everything in front of you, is the other part to also try and induce and try and catch that runner off third because he was obviously crashing a bit. So if by checking it first a bunch, you might be able to catch him in a rundown. So is Gabe's first throw in that event, either home or to cross diamond to Sam at that point? Um, you, you ask very good question there. Um, there was a lot going on on that play. Um, I don't know if I want to specifically uh, talk about the what we were doing um, with that um, for other reasons, um, but it was well noted that um, Real simple. We uh, we felt like we made very very good decisions during that sequence uh, to help us win the game. Uh, we didn't execute uh, one piece uh, in those decision making uh, things, and um, that's something that as a coach um, is is no fun because obviously when you execute things, that means that. Uh, you did a good job and when you don't that means that as a coach, you did a bad job and so. Um, I think good decisions were made uh, and we didn't execute one piece of it. And yes, to answer your question, we we definitely and clearly saw, um, you know, the energy of the runners and and where available outs were in that scenario. And we were using plays to get that available out and make sure that we uh, won the game. Luis Ramirez. Can you talk to me about uh, some of the impact that players such as Kenyon and Gabe had on your program? Um, obviously, it's really difficult for them right now, but um, maybe kind of tell me a little bit about um, what you told them after. I told them I loved them. I told them uh, thank you. Um, I told them that the what they've started here uh, is clearly going to grow because of what they did and invested. Um, we talked. Uh, for quite a while. And I love these kids. These kids are awesome. They flat out gave everything they had for this program. Um, they put it on the map again. Uh, it was off the map for a little bit. It was on the map before and now it's back. Um, it was because of their determination, their efforts. Um, love those kids. You know, the, the Oregon kids are a tough group of kids. Those kids want to win for the University of Oregon. Uh, the people of Oregon are, are um, really loyal people that appreciate hard work, appreciate honesty. And these kids just loved every single day of coming to the ballpark and, and being coached, and sometimes being coached hard, uh, but being coached fair. And they committed to Oregon and I love them. They, they've uh, invested so much that the beginning of what they've um, you know, accomplished will, will be obviously seen for future years. Rob Mosley. Olsen uh, drives in a run, scores another run. So he, he, he certainly made his presence felt, but just, you know, did you feel like you missed Jack in, in any role tonight? And, it, you know, did you have time so once you got the diagnosis to adjust to his absence? And did you feel like guys uh, adjusted to that as well as they could? Um, well, I mean, Sam, Sam's a good player. He works his tail off and I think he did a really nice job. I thought he had a good game. Um, uh, I don't know that there was a lot of adjustment or whatever with, uh, you know, with Sam in and Jack out or anything like that. I mean, 
you know, I miss any player that doesn't get a chance to be with us during the games. Um, and so uh, would Jack have had a different impact on the game and stuff like that? We, we don't know those um, answers to those questions. I, I don't. I don't have anything that I could pick out negatively that Sam Olson did. I love him. He did. I thought he played his tail off and he had a great game. Last question, James Crepia. Because we live in the world that we do was and the time of everything and the number of teams that just got eliminated this weekend. What is your timeline with your players in terms of, I mean, Jovan was the last guy to leave. I can't imagine that he's looking to return, but it is an available option, but whether it's him, Alstrom, you name it. Uh, what is the timeline because of the scholarship crunch and all the things we've discussed over the last year that you need decisions in order to best proceed and go forward with roster management? We take care of the people that build this program first. And so the people that have opportunities to play pro ball, we make sure that those young men know that, that they're always welcome here uh, and their scholarships are intact. And those kids, we want them back, um, anybody. Anybody in our program that we built with this year that was loyal to our program and is, uh, you know, and does a quality job every single day, we want those people back. Sure, they're going to have hard decisions in the coming days with professional baseball. Um, you know, roster management and time crunch and stuff like that, it's real simple. We take care of the people in our program first before new people come in. Um, recruiting, yeah, we're going to be extremely active in recruiting. We'll be on the road, um, you know, right away. Uh, in terms of recruiting. But the first thing that we want to do is make sure we don't ever turn our back on the players that just invested so much in the year. We want to make sure that we close up with them, whether they're going to return or whether they're going to leave. That's uh, time will tell in, in, uh, you know, in the days to come. But the meetings that are required, the meetings that are uh, earned by our players to be able to, to, to close up you know, a year, those are things that as a coach, I value a ton and I want to sit with our guys. They've invested so much in this this season that I want to be with them. Um, it's hard. And really, at the end of the year, there's only one happy team. Uh, and it's um, that's the way athletics is. And so that's the hardest pill to swallow. And, um, you know, the goal for this program is to be that happy team. Coach, thank you for your time. Congrats on a great season. Thank you. Thank you for all your support. Really appreciate it.